to conclude there is this really amazing when I was about 40 years ago I heard this from great master and it had such an impact on me and later I discovered in the Dzogchen teachings when I received from Karen Bacchir, Hirsi Karen Bacchir, it appeared again and again, this, this phrase, because it became a really important one, which says in Tibetan, it's very beautiful, Chu manyok na tang sem machuna de. Chu means water. Manyok means if you don't stir it. Na means then. Tang means clear. So that means water, if you don't stir it, will become clear. That's a fact. That's the nature of water. Nature of water is if you don't stir it, it becomes clear. Now that's a wonderful example. This is very evocative. Just as water, if you don't stir it, will become clear. In the same manner, the next is very important. Sem machina de. Sem means mind. Or mind. Machu means now the beautiful word, the bad word, machupa. In, for example, like Dzogchen Mamba, that's the most wonderful thing, Machupa. Machupa, very difficult to translate into English because Machupa means that, but the closest term that we could use to describe Machupa is unaltered. Unaltered, you know? When you leave something in its own natural state without any manipulation or contrivance, that's Machupa. You understand? Because trouble with us, we manipulate too much. I remember once a great master, he told me, Rinpoche, root cause of a mental, all a mental problem is too much thinking. Too much thinking. We don't leave our thinking mind alone. So leave your mind unaltered without any manipulative contrivance. Just as water, if you don't stir it, become clear. In the same manner, Mind left unaltered will find its true nature. Same machina de will find its bliss, will find its peace. It's very profound. In fact, well, if you realize the more, you can realize the calm abiding of shamatha, the cleansing of vipassana will bring the, the experience of great bliss, of the unity of bliss and emptiness. And all these experiences of nature, mind, all that can rise from that. That's why the instruction and meditation in the higher teachings, this one, Chumanyong Natang Sem Machina De, is really the key. I found this to be good. And then further on, this great master, Longchen Ramjam, you know, the omniscient man, Longchen Ramjam, in the teaching called Semi Grandro, Self Liberation of the Mind, in that he said, Machu Machu Ranga Sem Machu, Manzin Manzin Ranga Sem Manzin. Meaning, meaning, do not alter, do not alter, do not alter this mind of ours. Manzi, manzi, ranga, manzi, meaning, do not grasp, do not grasp, do not grasp the mind. Alter and alter, mind that's altered will stir up the cloudy depths of mind which will obscure the inherent nature. So the key is unaltered. And so the key to even Dzogchen, highest meditation is unaltered. Leaving your mind, as Kensha Rinpoche says, Kensha Rinpoche wants to ask him, when are we in the nature of mind, when are we not? He said in Catholic simplicity, he said, if you leave your mind all out in the machupa, you're nature mind. If you altered, you're not nature mind. The main thing is unaltered. When you remain unaltered in this way, slowly, slowly, it frees the thinking mind. Slowly, slowly, the ordinary mind, thinking mind, actually stops. There's no longer even the thought of meditation or meditator. All that begin to become in the state of being in the state of transcendence. It's amazing. So the first is really meditation, do not alter, do not alter, do not alter. But then it says, do not grasp, do not grasp, is that when you remain in the state of unaltered, you may arrive at the deep stillness, a profound peace, 
But then after a while, a little movement may rise. Something rises. Then the tendency is we may rise in maybe whatever experience comes, we tend to grasp at it. So the advice means do not grasp at the risings. Whatever risings, you leave the rising and the rising. At Dujum, which you say, leave the seeing and the seeing, leave the hearing and the hearing, leave the thinking and the thinking. And particularly in terms of experience, people have very profound experience of bliss, clarity, absent thought. They get very excited and they, they grasp on it. That's the mistake. Sometimes if you have a negative experience, you know, then you have an aversion. So it's these two things, that uh, to attachment to happiness and cause of happiness, and, and that the aversion to suffering, cause of suffering, that which cause, both, uh, cause, that which cause suffering, both in happiness and suffering. Basically means that whatever experience more come, if it's good experience, one should not be attached to it. If it's a, even a negative experience, there should be no aversion. Just experience of experience. Good experience is good. Bad experience is not good. It doesn't really matter. What does it mean by being uncontrived? Means it means that if you can rest, means it. If this means that if you can rest, it's okay. If you cannot rest, that's also okay. If you have thought, that's okay. If you don't have thought, that's okay. Good thoughts are okay, bad thoughts are okay. Everything is all out. Awareness is like a space. Thought and emotion like the clouds. If there is beautiful clouds and ugly clouds, a rain, shower, or thunderstorm, and hurricane, tornado, blizzard, and hailstorm, it doesn't make any difference to the space. Whatever comes in the space is fine because nothing can change it. A blizzard or thunderstorm cannot change space. Blue sky, bright sunshine cannot change space. Space is always there. You cannot burn space or destroy space in any way. It's always there. It's the same, it is the same with our awareness. Whatever Whatever appears in our mind, good thoughts or bad thoughts, emotions or absence of emotion, feelings of restfulness and or sense of restlessness, stress or relaxation, it's all like a weather. Some days there's good weather, some days bad weather. But these weather-like experiences cannot change the space like awareness. Even bad experiences are within the awareness. Because without awareness, we cannot have them. Because I think the main thing that you do not realize, don't realize, this is the really something amazing I'm going to share with you. You know, what Buddha said, sem, in the Wisdom Sutra, sem la sem manchi te sem jirang Mind is devoid of mind. For the nature of mind is clear light. If you really examine mind, to investigation, there's no such thing as what we call mind actually exists. Past is past, future is not yet come. Even with the present, moment you think about it, it's gone. The only thing is pure awareness. So what mind is devoid of mind, if mind is devoid of mind, what is mind? What is the nature of mind? What is the main thing? This people don't realize it. This is the secret of Tibetan Buddhism, and this is the gift, that the main thing is, is the, is the cognizance. The na mind nature is cognizance. You know, it knows. It knows. You understand? It knows. It's clarity. It's cognizance. Or it's awareness. Awareness. That awareness, that pure awareness that's within ourselves is the most Precious friend. We should make with a friend with this one. Because that awareness is there when you were born, it's there when you grew up school, when you, when you, it's there when you get old, it's there when you're sick, it's there when you're ill. It's the most reliable one. Everything else is temporary, moving and changing. The awareness. So you should make friend with your pure awareness. This clarity. 
Often people meditate, focusing on just remaining in stillness more. That, the great master said, is not the thing. Focuses on clarity. Clarity, pure awareness, pristine awareness. In fact, rikpa, the word rikpa means pure awareness. Beyond our ordinary mind. Is that clear? So in that dimension, whatever appears in the mind, good thoughts, bad thoughts, emotions, absent thoughts, feeling, all is fine. Like, for example, a very good one to demonstrate is a movie projector. When you have a movie projector, you know, when, you, when showing a movie, when you look behind it, what really causes it is a, is a bulb that's giving the light and it goes onto the film which moving at a particular speed gives the illusion of reality on the screen of a phenomena, isn't it? But now, this bulb is giving the light, okay? And the bulb, the light of this bulb is being misused. It could be kind of like a movie of Jesus Christ, superstar, all kinds of things. But you see, the bulb is not at all involved in all this. Whatever may be used, but not at involved. Our true nature mind is not involved at all. There's a part of us that's always pure, unstained, free, pure. In fact, more you realize it, more you own that aspect of nature, more free you become, more purified you will be. You'll be able to overcome your negative karma and gain liberation and freedom. That's the secret. You got it? So when you realize that, even bad experiences within the awareness, because without awareness, there cannot be them. In fact, you see, even with this clarity, if there's no clarity, there's no anger. If there's no clarity, there's no desire. If there's no clarity, there's no also wisdom. You know? But the trouble is, when the anger rises, yeah? But the trouble is, we're not aware. When the anger rises, we should become aware of the anger and not act in it, not become the anger, then become negative. Whereas if you're aware of the anger and remain set past it, then anger can liberate anger, desire can liberate. It's not easy, but possible. You can actually become, people want to be free of their negative emotions. This is the supreme way. Therefore, don't care about your experiences, mood, thoughts, emotions. Everything is allowed. But after some time, you will get distracted. And then when you notice, oh, I was distracted, then you already come. But if you even realize, oh, I was distracted, and if you become aware of it, you're no longer distracted. Key to connecting with our true nature is being unaltered. Much deeper. When you remain unaltered, leave your mind in its own natural state. All the thoughts, thinking, naturally dissolve. More you settle, the more you become natural. Or like, more and more you settle in your true nature, more and more you connect with your fundamental nature. Machipa is a natural way of abiding. It brings the atmosphere comfort and ease. We are naturally relaxed, free from the conceptual mind, free from thoughts, thinking. Machupa is really carefree dignity, natural simplicity. There's nothing to attain, there's nothing to do. Often there can be subtle tension in your meditation that we think, am I meditating well? Should I be correcting my meditation by doing this or that? It can become a struggle. But Machupa puts ease to your meditation, completely free from meditation, of the limitation of concept, and by just being unaltered Machupa, you accomplish all. Of course, now, that's a quite a way up, by the way. First, you've got to do basic practice, and that, I'm showing, is the goal. What you need right like this, see? 
free. Do you expand a little bit? I'm extremely grateful for masters who are actually demonstrating, showing through their beings, introducing me to this, brought me to me the really true knowledge of my own nature very much. <laughs>